let's start with the two of you. Giovanni, how did you come to this movement and how did you end up making the decision to go on hunger strike? Not once, but you're going to do it again, which will be twice. Because we're going to die. That's the bottom line. What we're facing is an absolutely catastrophic existential crisis. The fact of the matter is, is that billions of people are going to die if we do not keep this climate crisis in check. I have family in Southeast Asia who are going to be affected by the failure of rice crops from the melting of the Himalayan glaciers and the rising sea levels that are going to inundate those crops. I have family in El Salvador who may die from the crop failures in that region, in the dry corridor. This is what's coming down the line. And the fact of the matter is, you will never ever bring about fundamental societal change unless you get the eyeballs. And this is what hunger striking and radical actions do. They get the eyeballs of people. Because at that fundamental point, that's the first point at which people begin to change their minds. Alicia, how about you? Um, so I just want to state that XR is nonviolent. We come bearing music and compassion for the planet. But just like Giovanni stated, I, as a youth, as an individual who has participated in the youth climate strike mark, uh, am extremely, extremely angry and frustrated. Talk about um, it. Yeah, I agree with Greta when she said, how dare you? How dare we let the people of Sudan starve? How dare we let the people of Yemen starve? Why are people suffering because we continue to exploit their resources? And now the climate crisis is finally knocking on our doors and we are ignoring it. We are putting the lives of our children at risk of the next seven generations. We've already ignored the indigenous people of these lands. Um, it's come to the point where as Martin Luther King Jr. said, if we don't do anything radical or some aggressive as XR is being looked at, no one will listen to mm. us. The, the cup is overflowing. We have to do something now. Gandhi always said it's not aggressive, it's assertive. <laughs> <laughs> um, was there a moment before you got involved? You, was there a kind of Aisha before and Aisha after, do you remember a, a moment? Because we have a society that tells all of us to learn, listen, be quiet, especially women, especially girls, you know, um, be seen, not heard, uh, learn how to make change, be pragmatic. But you two have not succumbed to that. And I want to know how come, how it happened, and what provoked this fury? Um, I think for me personally, it's been sort of brewing for a long period of time. I am a college student, so I sit in classrooms. I have to listen to professors tell me about how to change the world. I mean, I'm taking a lot of public policy classes, and that's not to demean anybody, but it's I cannot learn from these textbooks what I need to do to change the system. Um, sitting in those classrooms. It will not get me anywhere. And unfortunately, that's the reality of the situation. Why are we in these closed buildings being told to study for our futures when we potentially will not have a future? Um, the, the traditional road is not working anymore. It won't guarantee us the nine to five life. And what about you, Giovanni? Was there a pre-Giovanni? Because I've realized that it's over for this civilization. I realized that, well, just a couple days ago, a few days ago, the International Monetary Fund literally said that there is a non-negligible risk of human extinction from climate catastrophe. That means it's a, there's a significant risk for human extinction extinction that is currently present from this crisis. Now you think that would be block capital headlines and maybe we'd all be talking about it. I mean, Libra, I don't mean to be yeah. amused here, but it is extraordinary the contrast between the passion we're hearing from our guests here 
and the kind of passive ho-hum that seems still to dominate majority culture? I mean, I think the reality is that in many people's lives, they may see no change at all or a very small change. And one of the things that Extinction Rebellion and the, the, the climate strikes and others are trying to do is to bring that crisis, which some people are affected by directly, who are at the front lines of this crisis, is to bring it into people's living rooms, is to bring it home, to expose like what's happening maybe in a remote place in the world uh, to folks who are sitting at home and thinking, well, I think it's an issue, but you know, I have other issues. Mm, so can those tactics work in a mere period where, unlike in the civil rights era or even in the wars of independence in India, we have a media that is just kind of flooding the zone with information. We have an attention span that has shrunk to a peanut and people are suspicious of fake news. You know, I think it's gonna be a lot harder. I mean, it, it's no mystery that TV was the secret weapon of the civil rights movement. The fact that millions of people had TVs in their homes for the first time meant that the Birmingham campaign, watching kids being uh, attacked with dogs and fire hoses, it brought it into people's living rooms. Uh, today, that doesn't cut it, right? There, as you said, there's a million channels. There's a fire hose of information. And so I think we have to be more creative about not just having dramatic action, but then how do you bring it home? Mm -hmm. How do we take those actions from Wall Street and from uh, uh, you know Washington and bring it to Main Street? Yeah. You know, how do we uh, really let people know that this crisis can't be ignored? I mean, I mean, not to disparage a hunger strike, which is major. How does it go though from being? I don't want to say symbolic because it's not symbolic. It's real flesh and blood. You not eating, um, but how do you? turn it into policy change, action, what's the plan? Well, what Extinction Rebellion wants is very simple. What we want is a declaration of climate and ecological emergency. What we want is zero carbon by 2025. What we want is a citizen's assembly to oversee a just transition for all human beings. And a just transition, and a just transition means that you prioritize human rights over profit, that you prioritize climate refugees, that you prioritize communities of color and other disaffected communities that are going to be impacted most and first and worst by this climate crisis.